Major, and we're here, I'm here with Pethra. How are you doing? I'm good, Lothar. How are you? Well, I took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> now when I have the break, when I had the break, so I'm fresh and clean. And uh, yeah, the, the atmosphere here is hot. Not only yes. in, you know the temperature. And it was the raining, and it was like wet and humid. My yep. face was sweating. Yeah, that's how it is. And uh, apparently in Singapore, first time for me here, so a uh, new experience. Uh, and I will be casting with you for the first time as well. I know, it's so exciting. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. Uh, what can you tell me about the last match that we had? The la uh, my last match? Uh, um, was that anything like super exciting? Yes, it was really exciting. We had a secret pally versus secret pally. And it was interesting because it seemed like they were, b they both had the same deck with t Sir Finley in <laughs> both of their secret pallies. Okay. Uh, well, that sounds interesting. But now we have two new players, uh, both from the lower bracket. And it's a uh, Wukyu. Am I doing mm -hmm. this correctly? Wukyu. Wukyu, mm -hmm. okay. And Nio. And uh, Nio is from Hong Kong. And Wukyu is from Malaysia, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So don't mind the flags. They both say. Okay, there we go. We got the change. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. And uh, the classes. So it seems like Wukyu is bringing a Druid Warlock and a Rogue. His mage is banned, which is interesting because Neo has a warrior which has got banned as well. That means that the mage was probably a freeze mage, freeze mage yeah. and the warrior got banned just to avoid that matchup. Which is interesting because there's a priest left now. And we didn't see a priest for a long time in tournaments really? in general. None yeah. in the past? Okay. I mean, uh, you know, we didn't see it today at mm. all. And in either in Europe or in, uh, in America is not really a popular class at all. So it's usually... Um, Underpresented in, in, in every single lineup. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to see it. In this yep, check. definitely. And now we're going into the match already. It's look it looks like Zoo, Zoo versus, versus Sandra yeah. Midrange Druid. But for what can you tell me about this matchup? <laughs> Anything? Actually, we saw this matchup earlier also, and okay. um, the I think the Jew yeah the Druid took it. The Druid so took it um, because he had some innovates, right? Probably. Yeah. Um. It was it was back and forth really, I, and I know that the Zoo is slightly favorable but you know the druid is just a really strong deck and anything yeah anyone can actually take this anything can happen you could anything say. can happen uh wow ascension that's a card i didn't see for a long time that yeah actually what is that doing in there that means that the druid ha plays more than two four drops usually you only see two pilot shredders and that's it and that means that it will be at least two pilot shredders and at least one ascension which makes the curve, well, you know, a lot better because Keeper is not always a 4-drop. Sometimes you just avoid playing it as a 2-4 body because there's no other threats on the board, so right? So he took, what did he replace for Senjin, do you think? It's a good question. Did you think he replaced a Shredder or a Keeper? Yeah, Keeper is un I irreplaceable. And yeah. I would say the same about Palta Shredder if you're playing double combo version. If he was playing like only one Savage Roar and one Force of Nature, then oh, maybe yeah. it makes sense to play Senjin instead of a Pyth Shredder. But I would say that no one will play currently with just one Force of Nature, one Savage Roar. Uh, that was uh, like trend two years back. But now I have no clue. We'll have to see. <laughs> because, you know, he has Lotep, he has Emperor. So it seems like a standard Druid for now, uh, excluding Senjin. For Wu Qiu, well, good opening yeah, it's hand. A nice, yeah. Nice curve. He has the PO to back up the Nurbanag. Engine of War as well. Well. So he's gonna actually have to go through that taunt right now. Does he? Hmm. Well. Or is he just gonna sit? I think he's gonna sit because he wants to keep her the grove, uh, the egg next turn, just to silence it. And basically, by doing that, he will deny the value from from the egg. So, a four, he will. In theory, he will deal another four damage. But uh, that will require a activator from Q, which we see is that uh, there's a PO, but it wouldn't mean that uh, that would be a favorable trade for Q at the same time. So this turn yeah. probably just hero power and pass. Yeah, not the best turn for HKA Neo. But yep, he does exactly what you said. <laughs> it's an awkward turn, that's yeah. for sure. It might even be a pile to shredder next turn from Neo instead of the Keeper of the Grove, but uh, I would say you probably want to uh, silence the the egg 
and just play the keeper, especially if you damage the Void Walker, because that set up a kill from the keeper of the Grove on the Void Walker next turn. So he won't be able to. Um, I mean, he doesn't want to attack with the Shade next turn. That's probably what is gonna happen. For Wu though, probably tap, and then let's see what he will draw. Mm. Not bad. Do you think he's gonna drop the knife juggler here? Yeah, for sure. He needs to develop the board. Uh, basically, Druid has problems with a lot of m like. The more minions on on your opponent board, the lesser the, the less are chances that the Druid will mm. make a comeback. So, yeah. uh, his only comeback mechanism are force of nature and a swipe. Basically, maybe a swipe with um, Azure Drake just to deal two damage overall in uh, on the field. And that is still far away, so I would definitely play that. Uh, oh. that wow, he pops it pre preemptively. Pre oh my god, that's a hard <laughs> one. Um, but wow, I'm really surprised by that. He's he sees the keeper of the grove, and the read is sick, really sick read. Wow, yeah, that's. He's gonna get rid of the void walker here and possibly trade his uh, Nax into the Nerubian. Now this is even a tougher turn than it was before because now uh, the plan was seen through by Wu Hu, so he got the read on why why was there a setup on, uh, with the attack on the Void Walker. So this is not looking good for Neo. He had to sacrifice the um, the Nerubian Spider just to kill the Nerubian Egg uh, minion that was being spawned after the PO activation. Hmm. Ten to five. I think for that was okay. For that was a good turn for HK and Neo. Well, it wasn't bad for sure, mm. but it feels bad that you just have to sacrifice a yeah. ten free, uh, sorry, a free drop uh, for a two drop that was activated and still date de dealt for damage. So it's not usually what you want to see uh, when uh, when it comes to a trade scenario, but it's of course not terrible. And turn 5 is usually a Druid of the Claw uh, or Belcher, so you don't want to play the low tip just for a 5-5 five five minion, but at the same time you know that your opponent probably will not have any kind of measure to trade it off. So you will have the attack with the low tip for the next turn. Yeah, and actually HKA Neo doesn't have any spells in his hand right now. That's true, that's correct. Wow, he goes for the double trades. Will he trade? No. No. That was a druid with the claw. Just in five. time. <laughs> hmm. Seems like the there are two options basically: low tap to s um to lock down an implosion for next turn. It's turn six, so it might be as well a implosion into a giant in case something really bad happens with uh, that um uh, with that hunted creeper and the imp gang boss. Because he for sure has to kill the night yeah. shatter. And it's either a Lothep or a Druid of the Claw here. Most likely. I don't like the Path of Shatter, to be honest. What about Druid of the Claw char- No, you wouldn't want to charge it into the Imp Gang. If you have an Innovate to kill the 1-1 one, one, one minion spawn, well, then you would just play Ancient of War, so what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Druid of the Claw in the Taunt mode is probably the safest play, because you saw one- Power of uh, the one, one PO already. Yeah. He goes for the load up instead. Ha! Huh. Look at that. He got he the implosion, but he played around the implosion, which was just top deck. Now for Neo, there's a swipe. That yeah, we haven't seen awesome. a yeah, we haven't seen a swipe. No swipe for Neo. Hmm. Well, this is an Emperor turn, right? Yes, it can be. Or I wonder if he's thinking about silencing the creepers, hitting the imp gang with his Lothab and hero powering. But mm, the Emperor Thorson would be better. Oh, yeah. And he's doing that anyway, but I uh, like this because it set up more opportunities yeah. for next turn. You can drop down more stuff. Yeah, you basically can count you got three innovates that are already being played in your hand. So they're be better than Innovates. Wow, a Leroy Jenkins in this version. Yeah, like uh, Azuma was saying, if normally when you run two Sea Giants, you 
they run also a Leroy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow, four. A high roll. Wow, that means that the Sea Giant will be played this turn. That's crazy. <laughs> that is. Without the Begim Hunter for Neo, this will be a yeah. really no bad side to be No big game hunter, no swipe. Whoops. This is not looking good. Yeah. Um and now the now the Sea Giant could easily go through the Ancient of War. He might want to just draw here with his Ancient of Lore, but that's just that's just lethal next turn for Wak then. I would say that mm, the only chance for Neo to, to have some kind of comeback um, is basically Sanjin into Pile to Shredder or Sanjin into Keeper of the Grove or even both Hunters with uh, Sanjin and Druid of the Claw. For, for the Druid of the Claw and Keeper and that should be 4, 12, 13, it's not enough 15, yet. not enough. Two off. But an easy way to just go through the tomb, deal 5 damage to the face, or play Abyss of Sergeant and low tap and just trade the small minions for the Druid Claw and then deal 8 damage to the face with the Giant, which is probably better mm -hmm. because it plays around the top deck swipe. And there are two swipes in the deck and only one big game hunter. So you probably want to maximize your chances of surviving with, with, the, min with the biggest minion. Yeah, I do like the Lothab here and the Abusive Sergeant to just with the one ones to take down the taunt. Oh wait, what I'm talking about? If you play the Lothab, then he can play the swipe because it's for nine mana. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you play the low tip, then you can just just attack with the sea giant, the the the, the, the claw, and just go wild with the one one minions. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, he's trading. Interesting. Especially interesting because he has the axes of the Leroy and the uh, abusive sergeant to just seal the deal. Yeah, that was. Yeah, he shouldn't be scared of anything really. In case something bad happens here, what could, what could have been the worst possible scenario? Um, big game hunter into second of the druid of the claw, and then you're not you, then you're not able to kill your kill off your opponent. Oh my God! What a what? top deck from for Wook you. An owl from the top of the deck into Leroy. Yeah. And that's more than <laughs> enough to finish off the game one between those two players. And Wukyu takes the lead. Man, this is the second time I've seen like a top deck owl. The second time today? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was definitely wor uh, it definitely worked for uh, Wukyu, and he locks down uh, his warlock because we play we are playing conquest. So every deck that wins is being locked, and uh, the next deck ha has to be a different class than the previously mm -hmm. uh, used by Wok Yu. So he has a rogue and a druid left. For Neo, he can stick to whatever he wants to. So he can still play the druid, he can just switch to the priest, he can switch to the paladin. What are your predictions, Buffer? Hmm. If, if Wok Yu goes for the rogue, is it okay to be like you? You're, you're, you already know that uh, Neo was playing Druid, so he might just stick to the Druid, right? Yeah. Because most of the people are just like sticking to one class for at least the second game. But it seems like he switched to Paladin. I think, yeah, anything goes really. Literally, also because that looks like the Merlock Paladin. Yeah, that is that's a Merlock Paladin against the uh, Oil Rogue. An oil rogue, if he doesn't play any belchers in his deck, there is no way of stopping the slaughter from the murlocs when they are charging to a hero. So also with the um, small amount of minions that can heal yourself, there's a there's a high chance that he will be just killed on turn ten. How does this matchup usually turn out? Uh, murloc pally versus oil rogue. I would lie if I would say that I ever played this matchup. Because, you know, Merlock Pattern is not really not that uh, popular on ladder. And the same goes for the Rogue, so playing those m that, that matchup <laughs> yeah. didn't really happen to me at all. But when, I, when I'm when i thinking about it, 
the rogue has to be the aggressor here, yes. so he needs to be put as many minions as possible on board Before, and just yeah. try to deal the, the like you know just to finish off the game as soon as possible with a big blade flurry. Uh, before your opponent gets to turn 10 uh, after playing some Murlocs. Yeah, as soon as uh, the Murloc pally gets a, a lot of draw, it's it just gets harder because yep. they have a lot of clears. Well, Q has the access to the Violet Teacher, which is great because on its own is capable of um, is capable of doing a really huge board presence and pressure the Paladin to clean off that board. And already an oil as well in the hand. Two preps. Wow, this is a huge turn right now. And the only possible Any way of class. playing around that is a pyromancer with equality for uh, Neo. So I if he will get the equality, this will be huge. But otherwise, he might be, you know, just falling short. Truce of a Champion mm. doesn't do much here either. What's he gonna do here? Is he just gonna Aldor? The teacher? Hmm. Tough spot. I think it's Truce of a Champion this turn. And then just mm. attack into the Vile Teacher. Because you have Consecration for the next turn. Oh, right. So whatever your opponent will do, uh, it will get killed by, by the Consecration. So definitely oh like that. That's smart. So your opponent will like to emphasize on the fact that he has a valid teacher and he can play spells so just do the 1-1 one, one minions. Oh, well, that's also possible. <laughs> He's playing around the Consecration. I mean, it's still 4 damage to the face, he played another minion, and now well, the question is... You could just hit the Shredder and then um, hope that the minion that comes out is... Uh, is not a Armani Berserker. <laughs> <laughs> because if there's an Armani Berserker, and you, you can play Consecration then. Because basically you add one damage on top. Yeah. Let me think. Well, actually, you decrease it by one on. What I'm talking about. It's the enrage just plus three, and in uh, the Valid Teacher itself is free attack. So never mind. Or he could get rid of the Teacher and just drop the Belcher. Oh, wait, he's gonna see what's gonna come out of the Shredder. Let's see. This will be important. A free HP minion. Oh. Which is unfortunate for Neo. It's not one HP. It's not two HP. Yeah. But it's the Three. only outcome apart from four with the Millhouse that survives the consecration. Move quickly. Huh. Oh, he's going for the draw. For the draw this turn. Interesting. Because that's that's six damage going his way next turn, and it's only turn six, so we'll be at fifteen. Oh my god, a Belcher! Yeah. That's the perfect drop for Walk You, because if there will be, um, if the Vile Teacher will get killed next turn, and probably that's gonna happen, then you can go for the oil and have a 100% chance of sticking mm -hmm. to, uh, the oil to an, a minion that can attack this turn. So and that's a lot of damage. Yeah, he seems oh to be yeah. comfortable over there. Fuck you. He's calm. Mm -hmm. Neo is, on the other hand, like, you know, just smiling I irona <laughs> I ironically. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't, I'm sure he's like, he's just like laughing at his hand. I Well, he used the Peacekeeper to decrease the amount of damage by two, but he didn't do anything about yeah. any kind of part of the board. So now, the oil can land on the freshly made apprentices. Let's see where it goes. And there are two of dogs. And they land on the old one. So maximum damage goes forward, and the prep blade flurry is everything that he needs. Oh. So that is that's it. That was that was very fast. I'm ready to work. It was. And I, think, I guess that's why HKA Neo was smiling. He kind of knew that was coming. This is why I thought that he needs to use the Consecration as soon as possible mm. and maybe just try to avoid a situation when your opponent can you know, just stack attacks in um, consecutive turns. And Because even if that's only four attack, that stacks up quickly. Mm. And the Paladin has decreased amount of uh, health. Uh, sorry, um, not... 
got a lot of options when it comes to healing. Yes, he has land hands. Yeah, but he can use it yet. Yeah, yeah. So and you're at turn six. So what can you do? Exactly. Right? I was surprised he didn't like pyromancer and then consecration. Yeah, there were a lot of options. Um, to just at least clear half of it. Oh. Wow, what an opening hand for Wokyu. Yeah, Wokyu. They are getting excited. Well, Angel of Law is being drawn, so that's huge. Let's see what, ha what will going to happen for Neo. Neo didn't draw any kind of innovates or wild growth. He still has oh. one more chance. So it's like the best start versus the worst start. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. The wild, the living roots will just stack on damage. Oh, oh there's a wild go. growth. That top deck is just what he needed. Uh, he needs to play it. He needs to play it because next turn he needs to drop the low tab. The guys outside are going nuts. <laughs> oh my god, there's an innovate as well for 10 5 Ancient of Lore. Oh my goodness. This is the perfect curve for Wakyu right now. Oh. Yeah, but you need the low tab. <laughs> <laughs> so you block the innovate for the Ancient of Lore. Ruined! The whole plan is ruined. Still a good, uh, good minion. You just drop a free, free minion. Hero power. Probably trade with the Pathfinder, so maybe you should even trade first to avoid the Doomsayer. No, probably don't. No, no, you actually just play first the Mind Control tech to avoid Mana Wrath. It's probably better. But I would definitely trade with the with the low tab. So you mm. play the Mind Control first, then trade with the uh, Pilot oh, Shredder to low tab. You see what's the outcome. And if there's a Direwolf Alpha, your 2 1 HP minion is gonna get boost buffed with the attack. Oh, oh, no he's trade. So he's going face. Wow, really aggressive. Wait, why what? was the. Why was. Oh, he's playing around MC Tech, do you think? Okay, he's playing around MC Tech and he set up a trade. Mm. But that's, that, that's not gonna work when your opponent is giving you a free HP, free attack minion. So that was kind of weird. Yeah, now it's a bit awkward. Savage Roar? Savage Roar seems like a correct play here. <gasps> oh Knife my! Juggler. He's really lucky. Oh my that is god, crazy. that's ridiculous. I oh, oh my god. god. I want a knife juggler for my shredder. <laughs> that juggler is on point. <laughs> Good job, Wild <laughs> Shredder. Good thing that in standard <laughs> we'll not see that card anymore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? That's gonna be it. What? Oh my goodness! What that you just fast. had? That was the fastest Druid game I've ever seen. That was a three-zero from wow. Q. What just happened? I mean, he had amazing turn one living roots into turn two wild growth into turn three. Pile the shredder into ten four. It's the best. It's was the best. The best start four? ever. That's oh, the mind control game. tech. Right? Yeah. Mind control tech because he was not able to utilize the innervate after the low tap. Otherwise, it would have been an engine of law, mm -hmm. which would be even better. Yeah. So. So you there was that one turn that you said it was kind of weird, right? With the. Where he didn't trade. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well. If he if he knew that he would get a second savage roll, for sure that was the better option, right? Uh, I mean. Uh, if you would trade with the with the low tap, he would probably still win the same turn, if I'm recalling this correctly, because he would use his hero power as the damage for the trade, so he would lose on four damage, but ha will, would have one minion more. But as you said, he was playing around my control mm -hmm, tech yeah. from his opponent, so probably that was a good decision, uh, or, or for for you. But wow, that was a that was so fast. That, that was, was a blast. Three zero just like that, and I guess that, um. He is studying for a PhD. <laughs> is he? Oh. Yeah. Uh, that I guess that helped him. <laughs> probably that helped him with the draws. So, uh, Neo is unfortunately knocked out of the tournament because that was the loser's bracket. So. Oh, that is true. Aww. That was a really bad uh, yeah, kick it in was. the butt. It must have hurt really badly. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll give you guys a short video before the break. And then we'll go to another another game but don't go anywhere and we'll be right back <laughs> 